There's a lot of opportunity there for building that trust and rapport and maintaining and building on those relationships with the existing customers, which far exceed the initial point of sale. Like these, you know, the longevity and the lifetime value of the client, it really is a thing and it can become very relevant. Okay, now that we've got the leads working and the sales that are being closed, it becomes a conversation of fulfillment. Like if it's not worth our time, just walk away, right? Like it's really not dropping $1,000 off the price to win a job isn't worth it for us anymore. What's the value you're getting in the long run? What's your net present return on investment? You know, if your investment's 30 grand, but in the long run of that system, you make back $100,000 in your pocket, that's a few trips around the world. Curtis, welcome to the Sideshade Podcast. Hey, mate. Thank you very much for having me. Mate, I'm pumped to have you. Um, this has been a conversation. I mean, we obviously have these conversations between us quite regularly, but it, I think it's one that the listeners and uh, audience out there would love to hear. Your, your cat in the background is what you love <laughs> Probably going to be annoying all time. Sorry about it's, that. It's, sort of, it's normally one of, my, one of my kids running in and pushing <laughs> buttons. <laughs> uh, hopefully she doesn't annoy us too much. She was, hopefully she'll start sleeping soon, eh? <laughs> All the listeners are going, what the fuck are they talking about? There's <laughs> cats, quam, the shells behind yeah, us. Yeah, absolutely. The That's hilarious. Bit of um, yeah, so anyway, uh, we're here today to talk about, um, I suppose, a bit of your journey uh, in the solar sales space. Yep. So um, you work with a client of ours down in, the, uh, in South Australia, General Electrical. They, you guys are absolutely crushing it. Um, and the reason that I really want to have this conversation, or oh, I think Joe as well wanted you to have this conversation, was just to highlight some of the, um, you know, the things that are working in the sales space, things that are not working, and I suppose importantly, I, from my point of view, I really want to cast a bit of vision to you guys out there, of, because there's there's so often, and I, I say this all the time, like Curtis, like people put these businesses put these roadblocks up uh, as to which are stopping them from hitting their targets. Yep. And the obvious ones that we see are just com like failure or refusal through whether it's like self pride or whatever it might be to follow process. Yep. Um, arrogance, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> um, and then the other one is, is as well, like not willing to sort of spend the money to get to the destination, you know, yep. but before we jump into any of that stuff, I really want to just, um, I suppose, dive into a little bit about, like your the journey. I mean, well, truthfully, the journey before you even came on the scene. But um, you know, we we're working with with those guys with Jono for a long time down there, yep. and foundationally, we spent a lot of time and energy and resource in establishing the tools and the the um, the the mindset, the thinking to prepare for scale. And I suppose you sort of came into the conversation, what, maybe six months ago or something along those lines? Yeah, so I actually did speak to Joe over a year and a half ago, originally, um, discussing this opportunity, um, maybe a little bit longer. But it actually turned out to be that he didn't think he was ready because he didn't have the processes set up. He didn't have yeah. the structure. Um, and when he told me that, obviously, it was disappointing at first, but I didn't want to come in and not have a structure and a plan of attack that he was comfortable with and that I was also comfortable with as well. So now that uh, he waited that extra year, um, it obviously made me come in, feel comfortable, and he could actually invest that time that was needed to get So we, we took, like, Joe through one of the early cohorts of what is now our foundation program, where essentially we developed, like, we deployed, developed and deployed the systems, the processes, and yep. to, that, can, that can facilitate scale uh and growth right and that's de certainly what happened you know with you know with joe's story like i think he went from a team of two to a team of 10 and now wherever you guys are probably 300 i don't even know but, um <laughs> like in in literally within a 12 months period i think they jumped from like 1.5 million turnover to 4.05 million turnover yeah. and it was but that like you sort of just said it wouldn't have happened without the processes being in place so he did he, he did things the right way and he does do things the right way which is great um but for you guys out there I just want to really drive home the fact that like there's 
for for choice of using a shitty cliche metaphor, you know, like the bucket, if there's holes in the bucket and you just pour in water in, it keeps leaking, blah, blah, blah. It's the same with like the, the process side of things. You know, you've got to make sure that if you do understand where you want to go and you've got a, like a, a vision of what that looks like, you want to have a clear roadmap, which is based on actual like things that can help you achieve those results. It's outcomes, it's outcome-based um actions you know and we see like all too often people getting caught up in like vanity vanity metrics for um you know especially in the marketing space like you look at reporting and all this kind of stuff which at the end of the day like it doesn't really mean anything if the outcomes aren't like jobs won cash collected you know yeah yeah so it was yeah it was a really good uh i suppose experiment and from the business perspective like having those systems deployed really do put the business owner or whoever's in charge in a position of uh power in the space of okay well now we have the tool Mm -hmm. what does scale look like for us and you know for you guys like that that was i suppose when joe was like right we're here we're ready now loads of leads, loads of conversations, our sales systems dialed in, come in, and this is, he basically is like, here it is, yeah. off you go. And as a result, you've been absolutely fucking crushing it. Yeah, luckily. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Joe's probably one of the best people to have, like his level of investment that he made into me. It wasn't like I just jumped on board and he was like, oh yeah, go have fun with it. You know what I mean? It's like he invested, he spent a fair bit of money putting me through training programs, um, in-person courses that were two weeks long just to get me up to a level that he felt comfortable to leave me alone to do my job, right? Yeah. Um, I think the importance of getting that training, like especially knowing that I didn't come from a solar background, I didn't come from that industry, coming into the space knowing that I have someone who's willing to invest not just his time but also his money, which he needs to scale that business even further, is is very important to me and it means a lot as well from that front yeah it, well i mean and i think it's very easy as business owners to neglect training yep. and overlook it and just sort of throw people to the wolves and when it doesn't perform go blame them yeah yeah uh so yeah i i agree i think joe's done a really good job with making sure that there's that constant i mean there's there's the there's the there's the training aspect but then there's also the feedback loop you know like there's that constant iteration and improvement on process which i think you guys do you know really well yeah which inevitably moves the needle because it, nothing's it, it's very it's not linear you know and i think people fall in the trap of thinking that it, it is linear and i think that's also part of the conversation when people have got their own experience or way of doing something and then when we present them with things that they should be doing at various stages that we see through aggregate data through clients all over the place where things are working and then that sometimes gets resistance because it's not comfortable yeah of and course. it means that, that yeah we have to do certain things a different way to get a different outcome that's the whole point yeah and yeah. i think people like you guys out there you need to understand that things you need to be agile with these it's okay to be agile with these things it's okay to make changes and you know shift things based on feedback data you know um, communication yeah. loops and just stuff like that well, I mean, if nothing's really working, why wouldn't you be willing to make change, right? Like, it's it's a small step to becoming successful. Like, there's definitely things when I started with Joe and, you know, started working with you and, and the team as well that was hard to adapt to, right? But if you're not willing to take that step forward, take that advice on board and make those adjustments, how do you know if it's going to work, right? You know, if it ends up working, great, let's keep going going with it. If it doesn't, well, then we shift and rethink that structure, just like you said. Yeah, I think that's one thing that, I mean, I say to Joe all the time, like to your credit, like one thing is you, you're you always willing to take counsel and just, you know, be open to ideas. I mean, and like you say, sometimes they don't always work out, but if you don't try it, they never do. Yeah, exactly. And Spot on. So, and, and, and really the whole part of, I suppose, what we try to do here is develop like a formula that fits the individual business. And that has different moving parts, which you can only really put together once you try things. Like you can't you can't really guess it. And for whatever reason, we can run two businesses next to each other parallel and you know they'll get different results. Yeah. I don't know why that is, but there's like it's about finding your own specific way. And then once you have that, it's a tool that you can use to define you against your competitors. And it's something that you guys do so well. Like you've got such a 
refined process now that when when potential customers come into that ecosystem it's just like wow like there's no one doing this yeah and yeah. and that's common feedback as well by the way from like a lot of our other clients in different places like once they get this system developed like their their client the feedback from their clients is no one no one that has quoted on this job has, has gone to even a fraction of the detail that you guys have even in the discovery phase yeah. you know like and yeah, it just well, I mean, brings the, belief the, the typical tradie way is to not worry about marketing not worry about that right like it's just oh, i'll get jobs i'll survive and it's like well if you want to grow your business and scale to a point where you know you're you're living that dream you've always wanted well that's just not the way you have to do it like you have to be willing to invest and joe has never been scared to take a risk and i think yeah. that shows so much gratitude of him and so much um, discipline to do you know and achieve his goals in the future as well well, I guess the, the thing is as well, and he's aware of this now, that like the numbers do the talking. Yeah, yeah, spot on. And so we see it all too common where businesses will say, oh, you know, we want to be, we, you know, we want to be hitting 150K months, 200K months, 300K months, whatever it might be. But then they're not willing, you know, that, that they think they're going to get there with a, you know, five grand a month ad budget or something, right? Yeah. Like it's just not a reality, and and that also is not necessarily their fault. But like this is, I suppose, where we come into the picture. Like that education front, it's like you guys, you got to spend the money to get to the outcome. It doesn't just happen. Yeah, exactly. But the numbers speak volumes, and the numbers are there's there's the vanity metrics, which truthfully is the like like the lag metric, which is the turnover, is dictated by the lead metrics, which are all the things that need to happen in order for the turnover to become a reality course and those things are the non-obvious things and those are the things that you can continually turn screws on at different stages of the process in order to help improve the end result which is typically turnover revenue whatever it might be yeah absolutely yeah i mean joe like i think we've had multiple meetings with you and at certain points he's just like whatever you need to spend to get me to this number let's do it right right like that shows so much that he is willing to just go all in and you know has the faith in his whole team myself himself and also you to get us to where he wants to be and where we want to be as a as a company as well i mean essentially at the end of the day like we can like once the formula is deployed and we know we're converting where we need to be like it, it becomes a game of like how well, well truthfully the bottleneck typically comes in the space of okay now that we've got the leads working and the sales that are being closed yeah. um it becomes a conversation of fulfillment and that typically goes one of two ways it's like do we add crew to deliver on the volume and up the volume of leads or do we up our pricing or change our avatar like we got a lot of you know bathroom renovation clients for example that like mm -hmm. you know what i'm done with 20 30k bathrooms i don't want to do anymore i want to do 40 50 60 plus you know yeah and absolutely. so it gives them it gives them that position of power I mean, it's like you guys, like someone comes in and goes, oh, can I do a 6.6? .6? You're probably like, oh, really? No, not really. Like, we don't have time for that. We're too busy doing you know, these yeah. megawatts installations, you know? So, yeah, I mean, the key thing now is, yeah, focusing on just not being so price dependent. Like the solar industry as a whole, I believe, is very competitive. Um, there's definitely a lot of sales companies and other companies out there that will just do anything to win any job. Um, and obviously working with Joe and adapting a process over time, it's just gotten to a point where like, if it's not worth our time, just walk away, right? Like it's really not dropping $1,000 off the price to win a job isn't worth it for us anymore. You know yeah. what I mean? So having that level of, is this a job worth doing? Is it a job worth making next to nothing on? Or do we just walk away? And we're at the position now where we're able to make those decisions where some companies who don't have that influx of work probably aren't at that stage where they can make those decisions. Yeah, and again, it's a, it's a testament that, or it's a luxury, I should say, that comes with volume. Like when you've got an abundance of leads and work and whatever, you don't, you don't have that, you're not scratching for the jobs. Yeah. And we see like often businesses will trip up where they'll, you know, they'll go and quote against another client and they'll, you know, like you say, knock a, knock a thousand bucks off or whatever to win the job. And then yeah. like at the end of the job, look at the numbers and go, wow, we actually barely broke even on that job. Like there's nothing yeah. in it. You know? 
Yeah, it happens so, a lot. Like the amount of people that are somehow beating us by thousands of dollars, Joe and I question how they make anything. <laughs> so it, uh, it's pretty crazy. But I mean, that's the sustainable factor, right? Like Joe wants to be around forever. There's a lot of solar companies that come into the space and leave the space, right? We don't want to be ever one of those companies. We want to be here forever. Um, and quoting to be around forever is one of the most important things. And I think like you make a good point with um, like people will typically, once they understand the longevity of the business and that you're an actual real company and you're not going anywhere. Yeah. Like, like recently, we recently bought a, a new a new car with a Ford and the um, I was looking at some other cars that were quite appealing, but they didn't have the the infrastructure behind for me to say, you know what, like if something goes wrong with this, like Ford is just going to come pick it up and replace it, like yeah. basically. Whereas these other companies, you know, I'm like, oh, what, what's, the, what's the roof rack system like this on this look like? Oh, they go, oh, well, it's not actually out yet because this is the first model. And I'm like, really? Like, yeah, absolutely. So I think there's, and, and even though I ended up paying more for that than I would have with the other cars, like, it's okay because I know, like, from a peace of mind point of view, like, I'm happy with it because I know that, like, they're not going anywhere. Yeah. Well, that's and, the investment. Uh, a customer makes right a client makes Correct. they want to invest in someone who's going to be able to support them in the long run um and obviously we offer that right like you call any of us you call joe and i we answer within five minutes if we don't we'll get back to you within the day so yeah. you know get, going with a company who doesn't have that reputation and that ability to help you through you know your whole process not just the installation process but if you call us in 10 years with an issue we're going to be there to help you right and I think that shows spades to customers on who we are, what we can do for you, and why we're the right man for the job. And this also, this this is where it starts tying into, you know, and a part of, you know, what, what we like to develop with the clients is like, how do we create your unique mechanism? And this yeah. becomes part of that conversation. And, and it happens at the first point of contact, but then it, it does, it, it never really ends, truthfully, because it can carry on right through you know, after the job's done through the service arrangements and all that kind of stuff. So there's there's a lot of opportunity there um, for building that trust and rapport and maintaining and building on those relationships with the existing customers, which far exceed the initial point of sale. Like it, like these, you know, the longevity and the lifetime value of the client, it, it really is a thing and it can become very, very, very relevant. Yeah, well, I mean, Adelaide's a small place. South Australia is a pretty small place in general. So word of mouth is one of the biggest factors here, right? Mm. Like if your reputation gets around as not being that person that you said you were going to be, well, you you know, that could ruin our reputation and any business reputation very, very quickly. So, you know, making sure we build a brand that everyone trusts and everyone believes in um, and we also believe in is probably one of the most important things as well. So... Moving, moving along a little now, uh, in terms of your journey and experiences within the space, like obviously you didn't come from a, well, maybe not obviously, but you didn't come from a solar background. Yeah. Um, and you're obviously heavily in that space right now. What are some of the things that, what are some of the obstacles that you, um, or the main obstacles anyway, that you encountered when you sort of embarked on this journey? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a few. Uh, the first would be understanding exactly the electrical side of things, right? Like there's definitely a lot of electrical, uh, you know, specifications that you need to understand. Uh, and if it wasn't for Joe investing me in those trainings, if anyone just walked into a solar background and just said, you know, here, go and sell solar systems, I don't understand how they could do it. You know, I yeah. spent the first three months working with Joe purely on training before I even spoke to a customer. So it shows that, you know, that education, that training, that investment into a, like a sales rep or a sales manager, whoever you're bringing on board is, is needed because unless they come from sort of an electrical background, you know, uh, the second probably thing would be the competitiveness of the industry. Like there is so many people who see a TV ad, three and a half thousand dollars for a 6.6, .6, you know, get it installed today. And then, you know, we're obviously around five, five and a half, six thousand dollar mark, depending on what you get installed. And they go, well, what's the difference? And you can explain the difference in spades, but three grand to some people is a lot of money. So it's, sure. it's making them understand the differences and working with them to, to make sense that the investment for that extra three grand is worth it. And what are some of those differences? 
obviously the lifetime monitoring we offer as a company obviously the the reputable brand um these three and a half thousand dollar systems are definitely contracted out you know they're who knows who was installing them where we have all our in-house staff install installs right so we're going to be there on the job we'll be able to explain you through the whole process and if anything ever goes wrong you're not fighting with a contractor and a sales company to decide you know who's the who are you going to deal with and how's your system going to get fixed I so, see that as like a big, um, I won't say bottleneck, but like liability with, you know, a lot of, well, truthfully, even some of the clients we work with who rely on that sub, subcontractor model. Yeah. Um, because they, I feel like the, the hardest thing to maintain with that model is the quality control at the installation level. Yeah. Unless you've obviously got someone that can go around and QC the projects, which, I mean, a lot of people will do, but it gets very, it's very hard at scale. Yeah. It's easy to sell the jobs, but then to maintain the quality, that's another thing, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think quality is so important for us. Like speaking to any customer I speak to, the biggest thing for us is if we have a bad install, that ruins our reputation, right? So making sure every install is done smoothly, um, the customer's happy, we're happy is our end goal at the end of the day, right? If the customer's not happy, did we do our job correctly? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, what about on the, in relation to like handling objections from individuals and overcoming objections in the solar space? Like what have you learned in, in regard to that? Yeah, I mean, obviously the biggest in, uh, objection is like I've said before, price. you know, the, the price. Yeah, that's your always your biggest objection you get. And the main thing is don't worry about the price, worry about the value. That's what right. Joe's taught me. That's what I've learned over the time. Like, yes, price is obviously a big factor in, in the economy for most people, especially if they're investing 25, 30 grand into a, a battery and solar system, right? But what's the value you're getting in the long run? What's your net present return on investment? You know, if your investment's 30 grand, but in the long run of that system, you make back $100,000 in your pocket. You know, that's a few trips around the world. You know, you have to mm. look at the dream, right? The dream is, do you want to pay an electrical company or an electrical provider six grand a, a year for nothing? Or do you want to make that investment in yourself? Um, obviously, the objection side of it, like a sales company will come out and say, well, a 10.6 kilowatt system will get rid of a $1,000 bill where we come out and we're saying you need this side, a massive system with a battery to get anywhere close to it. Yeah. So, you know, building that communication and information to show the customer this is actually what you need is probably the, the biggest hurdle you have to overcome. I think that really ties into, and this is like a huge part of what we try to do right from the, the get-go with even the way we run ads for clients is like help, communicate outcomes as opposed to the physical thing because very rarely people come to you and they go i want a solar system or maybe they do but like what, what is it they actually want really like it's probably not panels on a roof it's probably they're paying too much for their electricity or they want to charge their tesla at night or whatever it might be yeah and i think that's probably one area where people or i see it all the time like they just don't ask, don't ask enough questions to really define what the problem is and that really is a direct correlation to what you should be presenting and putting forward as the potential solution to that problem as their trusted advisor. Yeah, correct. Well, the main issue is saving money, right? That's what everyone wants to do. Everyone wants more money in their pocket. Like solar and battery is just that solution to that problem. So, I mean, at the end of the day, like you said, you're not going to a house because someone actually cares about panels on the roof. Right, like I mean, active. yeah, but then you, you you say that, but like I'm 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 often surprised at the you know we have meetings with clients about how many people, yeah, the the money side of it, sure, but they they genuinely have a belief that they're doing something consciously for the environment. Yeah, correct. There is definitely the side to it, like the renewable energy side. The the I want to be sufficient off my own energy. Correct. And, and that's really, really important for a lot of people. And that's one big selling point for us. You know, I could walk in and speak to a customer and go, well, you've seen electricity prices increase by 25% over the last two years. No matter what they do with those prices, if you have a big system and a battery, it doesn't matter. You're living off your own energy. And yeah. that, that makes people happy, right? They don't oh, have yeah. to rely on someone else. 
Yeah. And so what do you see in, in terms of like how often do you get uh, have conversations with clients where they come to you asking for one thing and then you end up steering them towards something? Yeah, else. pretty much all the time now. Right. Yeah, like so I what are some of those site, things? Yeah, I went to the site visit actually last night who had two other quotes. Um, they said that just a system would get rid of their bill, but they work nine to five, both of them. Uh, so all their usage is in the right. afternoon, in peak usage times, and no one had even offered a battery set up to them. What? So I sat there and, and laughed and I said, you know, you have a spa, you have an, like a pretty big aircon system, you have all of these things, but you can't even self-consume any of your solar. So like I can promise you if you just go a solar system, you probably look at a 40 to 50% reduction on your bill. What's your goal? Is this your forever home? If so, you need to make the right investment. So yeah. it was working with them to understand how a battery works, explaining it, you know, step by step on this is how it's going to work. This is what it's going to do for them. And in the end, we came to eliminating their bill completely with a really, really big system for their property. Right. So, Wait. yeah, definitely. It was good. It was good to make someone understand something considering they've heard so much from someone else. And, and that's a big obstacle that I have to come pretty much every day. You well, go into a... Say... Yeah, you're right. Like it's it's an obstacle, but it's also, and I think this is an important thing for you guys to understand as trusted advisors, it's it's as much as an obligation as it is an opportunity. Yeah, spot on. You know, like it's an obstacle, but it's also, okay, well, this is great. We've had two other people out here that have tried to sold you, sold you this system and it's not going to help you achieve the outcome. And you've just done that through asking questions, right? Yeah. Yeah, most people don't spend the time doing that. Yeah, that's one big thing. Like so many people in this industry as well, they just send out quotes without completing a site visit or yeah. or talking to the customer. It's like, yeah. what are you trying to do? Are you trying to figure out what the customer wants or are you just trying to do a solar install? And for us, it's knowing what the customer wants and working with them to find the right solution. What's your um, like framework around... I mean, obviously, I'm asking this because I kind of know it because it comes through me, but like the feedback loop uh, and like your ability to be able to pinpoint areas of potential improvement based on the different stages of the process which you guys have deployed and developed over the years. Yeah, well, I mean, it just constantly improves, definitely. So obviously working with you guys, giving constant reports back to you guys to understand exactly where we need to improve um, was one massive thing. I think the the changes you and I made, uh, definitely with sending reports, trying to keep, you know, the team updated as, as like... Uh, as often as possible, um, makes you feed information back to me that's definitely useful. Uh, like we implemented the booking and call uh, situation pretty quickly due to a lot of leads not answering the phones throughout certain periods and that's seen a massive improvement through the structure as well. Yeah. And so those, the, and what Curtis is talking about for you guys out there is like throughout the various, like once you have a defined sales process, which will like when we work with clients, we deploy that and then we customize it to suit them. But it, it's broken down into different stages and those stages have numbers that are relative to, I suppose, benchmark standards. So we know at any stage of the process, if these numbers don't line up, then there's screws that can be turned there to tighten up that individual part of your process. Yeah. And it's never a done thing. And there's so many variables which come into play along the way uh, which which constantly <laughs> keep it a living and breathing organism for better or worse. But the point is, like, if you have that feedback loop and you and you're agile with it, like, it's small changes that make big differences. You know, yeah. it doesn't have to be a giant overhaul every time. It's just like little things that turn the you know to to make these little changes. And so, it is important that you know those and you know what they need to look like because it's and you have that dialogue happening with. Um, within the team so that you know you can understand okay well here's an area of opportunity currently where our numbers aren't on par here what do we do to fix that great maybe it's an ad issue maybe it's a um like like you guys experience maybe it's a, a funnel issue we've changed the different this but i mean that here's the thing that what what worked what was working now we didn't need to worry about that 
you know, two years ago, a yeah. year ago. It was working fine. Like it always changes. There's always something you can do to tweak things, but you need yeah. that dialogue. Yeah, I mean, just being adaptable, I think, is the most important thing, right? Like, look for improvement and be willing to adapt. Like, yeah, like you said, it doesn't have to be a massive changeover of everything just because one thing isn't working. You have to figure out small little turns of that screw to find out exactly what's not working and make that adjustment. But if you're not willing to adapt and find that improvement, well, then what's the point? And the good thing about having a system in place is that it means that you can track things. Yep. And like in the interest of scale, so the, the first thing that we always try and do is remove the business owner from doing the thing, right? Because they're normally the bottleneck and they're normally the one that fucks most things up because they've got too many things on their plate. Yep. Especially when it comes to like managing inbound leads. So we, you know, we, we place like courtesies in business now. They don't do to the extent that you do. Like essentially they'll just handle the, um, like the discovery call. Yep. Like we actually go to site. They're not, they're not trained electricians. They're not, you know. Yep. But the point is having like, man, I, I, you can't, I mean, you probably, you, I'll probably preach to the choir here, but like that sales cadence and having that process followed through inbound leads is an absolute game changer. Like it is literally 10 xing results for businesses all over the place. And it's seemingly simple. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's not easy, but it's simple. Like, and when I say it's not like it takes, it, it takes a lot of resource and time to do it properly. Yeah. And I think that's where people are like, I don't have the time for this. And it's like, well, yeah, but you want the outcome. So yeah. like, it's not a matter of whether or not you've got the time. If you want the outcome, that has got to be done, which is kind of why we do it now for clients. People are like, we'll just do it for you because we know it works. But like, I think people have these objections. They fabricate these excuses, which contradict the whole reason for why we're doing it in the first place. You know, we, we had like, we had a, someone inquire a couple of days ago, this lady, she's like, we've got, We've got loads and loads of leads, but we but our sales guys aren't getting to the leads. So my sales guy contact, contacted them yesterday morning because we had a meeting booked in my calendar, and he said, "I'm just calling to confirm the appointment." She's like, I have to, "The appointment's already booked. Why would I need to confirm?" Because well, it's part of our process. But anyway, she threw a hissy fit, cancelled the meeting, and I sent her a message, and I was like, "You realise like like the irony behind this? Like you've got this." <laughs> <laughs> it's like hilarious and of course you got a defensive and threw a tantrum or whatever yeah, like, yeah, like shit i couldn't care yeah. less right like the, the point is like it's just some people you, you need to sort of step back and look from other perspectives to sort of see okay well this is these are the thing and, and the same conversation with ad budget right it's like okay like this is the goal here like yeah you have to spend this much to get it and we know that because this is the data like we're not making this up like this is yeah, the actual exactly. data it's telling us that so just spend that to get that done yeah. right yeah. And I think some people, uh, that can be a bit of an obstacle. Yeah, well, it does take time. Like, I definitely get that same objection. Like, I've already confirmed the appointment. Why are you calling me before the booked in time? I probably get that at least four to five times a week. But yeah. it's just like explaining to them and making them understand that, you know, we're actually here to help them. You didn't just book in a call for nothing. You know, it, like you said, simple changes affected this business massively. You know, when we made the change to not just call someone once, but call them twice, if you're going to call them, showed ample amounts of results very, very quickly. You know, most people don't pick up the call on the first call if they don't know the number. You call them twice, yeah, maybe I should pick this up. But if you call them a third time, they think it's an emergency. Correct. And when you've got them on the phone, they're ready to talk. Yeah. So. It's just making that little bit of an extra push, you know, putting in that tiny bit of extra effort. Hey, it may seem annoying, but at the end of the day, they're the ones who sent the inquiry in in the first place. Exactly right. It's, and, and, and I think that's, I think people go, oh, I don't want to be a pest. I'm like, well, hang on, they inquired. Yeah. How's that being a pest? They inquired. And, and yeah, you're right. Like the, the, like the, the, the triple dial is a massive, is a, is a game changer. And, and then, the, you know, the daily cadence and stuff that follows. But like, I think the, most people won't do it because it, it, they think it's it's uncomfortable. It might be it is uncomfortable. It is uncomfortable, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, you have to get used to it, right? Like when they pick up the phone, they might be annoyed on that third ring if it's not a family member in, a, in an yeah, emergency yeah. crisis, right? <laughs> but you just have to come in with that positive attitude and, and make them calm down very quickly. And the minute they go, oh, I did send this inquiry in, they normally shift. Like they're like, oh, I'll give this guy the time of day now. Yeah, exactly. I mean, look, and, and the reality behind that is people are busy. And Absolutely. Like if, if, you're, if you're running a business right now, and especially if you're paying for leads and your process is we call them and then like, that's it. Like, you're kidding yourself. Because yeah. like, 
no one answers their phone anymore, especially the first time. Like you said, Curtis, like no, this phone rings all the time. I never answer it. Yeah. Like, if I don't know the number, I just won't. Like, but, <laughs> you and I both. If it's like, if I'm like, oh, okay, third time. Well, I, I say it all the time. I'm like, man, is it, what, what if it, if, is it the kids at school? Like, what's happened? You know, like, yeah. Yeah. So, so you do answer it. But I think yeah. that attention to detail and just getting getting comfortable with the uncomfortableness of what you have to do in order to get the outcome. But like there was like literally 10x the results. Oh. And it's it's amazing as well that, that we see the data on how many vis, like uh, bookings, calendar bookings get made. So from like the discovery stage through to like site visits or like, you know, for us, our, um, uh, like our, our, our call, like a, a phone call. Yeah. Um, how many of those happen after day three Yeah, of calling them like six times a day kind of thing. And then day three, they answer like, hello. You're like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hi. Like, and most people just because they're busy, right? It's not like yeah. they're trying to neglect you. And you know what? And, and if they have the shits with it, then move on. Like it yeah, doesn't correct. matter. <laughs> like just next. Yeah. Spot on. Yeah. Like, I just mean, keep your eye on the ball and on the goalposts, you know? Like people have their own problems going on. People have their own life. So like you said, they're busy. You know, who knows what they're going through. So even if you call them three times, four times, and then they call you back in a week's time, it happens a lot. But yeah. if you didn't call them three days in a row, that number wouldn't be in the head like, oh, I've got to call this person back. Yeah. Like if someone called me one time and never called me again, I'd forget that number in a matter of 10 seconds. Yeah, exactly. You right. know I mean? So there's uh, the benefit of just being that extra step, caring, you know, pushing and, and putting in that little bit of extra effort. Yes, it's not easy. It's uncomfortable and it takes time, but it becomes second nature very quickly. And then when you back that up with a solid process, yep. it just it just breathes belief into the, like the, the, the leads. Like that, yep. I'm going to call them leads because they're, they're not even really marketing qualified at that point, but they can see that there's actually method to the madness. Yeah. And well, if I hadn't, them, have, sorry. The, sorry, mate. I said if I hadn't have seen the results from it, I wouldn't still be doing it. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I've seen the results. Um, I've seen the outcomes that Joe and I have been able to achieve. So it clearly works. You just have to be willing to put in the effort to do it. And and you're right about it being small changes. Like a, a client of ours in Sydney last week, like they've been clients for ages, and I could just tell that there was something they weren't doing right in the process. And I just said to them, like, just for the next week, just do, just follow this for one week. Just humour me. And Friday, the conversation was like, mate, we've built four meetings this week, and all yeah. I've done is that one change. And I'm like, I know. Right, so just follow the fucking process and work. Right? <laughs> yeah, if we just need to listen sometimes, but like you said, most people are pretty uh, arrogant and ignorant to uh, make those changes when they're so used to just doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so anyway, it is what it is, what it is, I guess. But mate, look, I, it, it's great talking to you. I really love the, um, I love your, like your passion and your willingness to. And truthfully, like I learned things from you as well, right? Like it, this is why the dialogue loop's so important because, you know, like it, it helps like progressively in, improve process collectively, not necessarily just for the individual business, but then like, you know, overall, you know, there's always little things that we can learn there and all these things we can improve. And it's one of the reasons why I was so pumped to get you on the show because like, yeah. honestly, guys, like there is no one doing it better than Curtis right now. Like he's absolutely <laughs> fucking crushing it on the solo sales oh, i appreciate it mate. <laughs> um, and yeah absolute absolute credit to you and absolute credit to joe you're doing a really good job no thank you well if it wasn't for you joe and everyone else you know helping me along the way you know i wouldn't be where i am so it's not just you know like joe always says it's not a him story it's an us story so yeah. like at the end of the day he doesn't think the business is just his and that's what makes him such a special person and such a special person to care for his team you know it's our business is what he says even though we don't have any part of it it's still our business so like that proves the type of person he is and why this business is going to continue to grow at the rate it's going to yeah absolutely well anyway i hope you guys out there that are watching this or listening to this you got some value out of that um i mean there's like gold nuggets stripped all the way through that conversation um and it, and if there's anything there that you would like any further clarification on i I'm, I don't doubt that Curtis would be happy and you know, willing to come back and uh, explore, answer some of those questions for you. Just let us know what they are. If you see, if you see this come through in social, then just ask the question there. Um, if you yep. send an email, reply, whatever. Um, but yeah, mate, great, great to have you again. Thank you so much for your time. No, and, thank uh, mate, you. I just, 
just lo- I, I look forward so much to the end of week reports from you. <laughs> and the every day K-K reports, K-K even. I mean, even your end of day reports, you're always crushing it. Isn't it? Every day there's sales, so it's it's just great yeah. seeing it. Yeah, well, let's continue on that uh, on that journey and let's keep pushing forward because yeah, I'm not going anywhere and us as a business not going anywhere. So let's keep moving forward. Absolutely. All right, mate. Well, thank you. And listeners, that is a wrap. New Zealand-based home renovation company, 6,593% ROAS. Sydney-based solar company, 2,700% ROAS. Hunter region-based bathroom renovation company, 5,616% ROAS. Melbourne-based building company, 13,182% return on ad spend. Adelaide-based solar company, 2,881% return on ad spend. Guys, the list goes on and on. If you are a trade-based business and you work with projects like roofing, solar, bathroom renovations, kitchen renovations, anything like that, head across to tradey.wiki forward slash pod for podcast. tradey.wiki forward slash pod for podcast. Book in a conversation. It is game changing.